Now, we've either got sick mitochondria like this, four-cylinder engines that are blowing smoke, stress, inflammation, gut issues, memory issues, joint issues, skin issues, anxiety, depression, or we've got these big sons of bitches here pumping out the good stuff. The mitochondria, what you might know, like anywhere from 20% of your basal metabolic rate up to 30%, your brain requires that. That's a lot of energy to be filled to the brain. And I did some research. Now, one brain cell, so that's the dendrites, that's the soma, the cell body, the axons, the whole fucking thing. About 2 million mitochondria, they say, is a reasonable estimate. 2 million. So if you've got brain fog, you've got loss of focus, you know, you just can't get into the groove, you're told that it's dopamine, you're told it's this and it's that, it's the other thing. Well, maybe the mitochondria we need to look at. And guess what else? The mitochondria are a necessary step to make your testosterone, your sex hormones. They're the only place you can burn body fat and get that body that you want. They create up to 95% of ATP, your cellular energy. And they are, they're also integral in creating things like dopamine for motivation, focus, really important learning serotonin for immune health, gut health, but also a happy, calm brain, and melatonin. So the melatonin does a lot of amazing things like sleep. It's a powerful antioxidant, especially for the mitochondria. It's, they like cool the engine down, melatonin. And they're also integral in detoxing. So if the mitochondria are tapping out, we're tapping out. And guess what we're told? We're told this is a normal part of aging. Now, what if we can get new mitochondria? Now let's explore that. For a lot of people, unfortunately, is they've got a lot of mitochondrial dysfunction, heteroplasmy, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So the mitochondria go through this process called fission, resulting in small damaged mitochondria. So you're left with this four-cylinder engine that's blowing smoke to make your testosterone, to drop your body fat, to fuel your success in life, your brain, create wealth to detox, to do all of these things, to sleep deeply, to enhance the immune function. What we want is these big power, powerful V8 engines. So it doesn't matter what you want in life, it comes down to two things. Number one, the mitochondria. So if you've got low energy or it's up and it's down, it's all over the place, could be the mitochondria. If you've got weight issues, testosterone issues, thyroid issues, mitochondria. If you've got anxiety depression and maybe you've got anger issues could be the mitochondria because when we get stressed out when the mitochondria is stressed out we lash out to get rid of excess stress stress hormones so what we have to do is treat these organelles with respect and know how to power them up so we have to get rid of the four cylinder beat up, beat up mitochondria and replace them with brand new mitochondria so the problems that you could have this is the second part of the problem. This is number two, POMC. So this is a pro-hormone. It's called pro opiomelanocortin and it's broken up into 10 other pro-hormone complexes. Now, we've, we've got to increase gene expression of POMC, and I'll talk about that today, but it could be driven by poor nutrient status, methylation, so epigenetic modifications over time can down-regulate gene expression of, of POMC. But you could, could also have poor gut and immune health. And I'll talk about how to fix that here today. Now, I've spoken about this since 2018, 2018. So that's like six years ago. You need to have a look at your meager index and you need to get it to about 12%. And that's going to lower inflammation and give you more power for the mitochondria. And we have to get rid of these four cylinder beta mitochondria and replace them with brand new mitochondria. You could have staph infections, sinusitis, UTIs, and you could also have a bit too much deuterium. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But if you're an older gentleman and you've had memory issues, weight issues, joint issues, skin issues, gut issues, anxiety, depression, it's going to take more time and a bit more detective work. But if you're kind of younger and you're just not quite there, man, these two things that I'll unpack here today are going to be pretty good. So let's just have a look at POMC. So as I mentioned there, it's a pro-hormone, a peptide hormone. It's got 241 amino acids. And when we signal it 
at the right time of the day. So we have to signal its expression. It's cleaved, broken up, cut up into 10 other hormonal products. So we've got all of these products here. So check these out. So we've got gamma MSH. This helps regulate blood pressure through modulating sodium balance. And it also works like an adaptogen. Have you heard of ashwagandha working as an adaptogen? So what does that mean? Well, this one here, if, it, if cortisol is too high, it brings it back down. If it's too low, it brings it back up to healthy levels. And we've also got alpha melanocyte stimulating hormones. So it's going to help regulate inflammation. It's modulating both branches of the immune system. It also helps trigger sex hormone production and libido. And it also increases basal metabolic rate and lowers appetite. And then we've also got the secreted gog for insulin here, clip. So it's keeping insulin at healthy levels. So really good for fat loss. And then it's also triggering two lipoproteins for lipolysis, lipolysis, fat loss, here and here. So that's pretty powerful. And then also these feel-good hormones like endorphins, endogenous opioids. And when you increase gene expression of POMC, it goes up and it goes up and it feels really good when you start producing more POMC. And then you've also got this one here, which is like an antipsychotic, and it also helps with blood pressure regulation. And the final one here has an amphetamine-like neurological effect. So you're going to be very charged up, kicking ass. And the, the final one here, beta MSH, regulates feeding behavior. So you're not overeating, appetite at the hypothalamic level for body weight. So let's just think through this logically. So right now, more than likely, you've got low gene expression of POMC. So everything that I just mentioned on the previous slide, you're largely missing out on. So this alpha MSH increases POMC, so it low, lowers your appetite, and it increases your basal metabolic rate. That is the holy grail of fat loss. Unfortunately, though, it can take like six weeks to increase gene expression of POMC to get up to optimal levels. And you've also got to make sure you've got good vitamin and nutrient status because you've got to be methylating. And that's just a fancy way of saying you have to have good vitamin and mineral status. Now, let's just talk about how the mitochondria produce energy. So here is the mitochondria where I'm circling around. So whether we eat proteins, and we don't want to waste proteins making energy, that's just silly. What we want to do is turn body fat or the fat we're eating into energy or carbohydrates. So the precursor molecule is acetyl-CoA for fatty acids and also acetyl-CoA for carbohydrates. And they go into the TCA cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle. And here's what happens. So all that this food is doing for you is extracting electrons and protons, also called hydrogen ions. So the electrons go into the inner mitochondrial membrane and you've got complexes one through four. And as they go through complex one and four, they pull up these protons into the intermembrane space. Now, when enough of them are up there, it causes a pressure gradient. And this pressure gradient acts like a waterfall. So all the hydrogen ions, the protons, go down through what's called ATP synthase, spins it like a little hydro turbine. They actually call it a nanomotor. That produces your ATP and metabolic water. So that's how it kind of happens. So as you can see, food is just a tool that we can use to produce energy. Now, I just want to talk about the difference between hydrogen 1 and hydrogen 2. So hydrogen 1 is a proton. So basically, you've got a proton and an electron. Then you've got deuterium. So it's got a neutron and a proton and an electron. So there's two issues with that. It's a lot heavier and larger, so that's problem one. And problem two, it creates stronger bonds, and I'll get to that on the next slide. But the problem with deuterium here is it doesn't fit down through ATP synthase. So ATP synthase shudders, and it doesn't work very efficiently, and it busts. And you go through that process of fission, resulting in small damaged mitochondria, so your energy comes down. Now, the issue with testosterone production, vitamin D production, anything that our body uses cholesterol for, 
if you've got these deuterium in there, try, let's just say we're trying to make testosterone and you've got that deuterium there, it can't break it, the bond very easily. So two issues. The extra mass from deuterium creates stronger bonds, slowing down or disrupting the reaction. So that's not good. And to break these bonds, it requires more energy. So think about that. So we've got to make sure that your deuterium is about 130, maximum 140 parts per million. And when you get north of 150, you've got deleterious health effects, inflammation, stress, cancer, all these things show up. And it's not like the scientists aren't speaking about this. It's kind of being buried. And I think you know where. If you follow the money, you know where this research is being buried. So here's just one. So a low deuterium depletion right here, prostate cancer. 50% decrease in prostate-specific antigen, ESA. 59% decrease in tumor volume. 33% increase in patient survival. Same is true with breast cancer. And here's a bit more research on deuterium. So when you get your deuterium under control, it has anti-cancer properties. So we're talking brain metastases, lung, breast, pancreatic, colorectal, prostate. And then it helps your brain, neuroprotection, anti-anxiety, depression. It enhances your memory, your moneymaker to create wealth. What about anti-aging? You don't want to wrinkle and have cellular aging go out of control. And you want to have a powerful antioxidant system. Extends lifespan, protects your DNA, reduces oxidative stress, and it increases the amount of enzymes to detox. And your enzymes do work. So that's pretty remarkable in and of itself. Then, of course, it manages diabetes and prevents diabetes. If you think back to the mitochondria, it's not busting them. So you can burn body fat and your energy production is more consistent and stable. Hypertension, detoxification, anti-inflammatory, anti-radiation. So for a lot of people, unfortunately, they've just got a lot of things they haven't got right yet. So their old mitochondria goes through this process called fission, resulting in damaged mitochondria, less testosterone, less fat loss, less brain function, less detox, everything powers down. And you know what we're told? We're told this is normal. It ain't normal. So let's just look at testosterone production here. So this is the Ladig cell, and this is the mitochondria. So you can see our cholesterol here. Imagine if it's got a lot of deuterium in it. It comes in and can't really break the bond too efficiently, and it takes a lot more energy, and you've got these beat-up mitochondria, so you're not producing a lot of testosterone. And then to add insult to injury, because you're stressed out and you're inflamed, it's making the mitochondria sicker and sicker, and they go through hypo, I'll show you here, heteroplasmia. So over time, your mitochondria morph, so you got more damaged mitochondria at the DNA level. Now, the mitochondria have their own DNA, separate to our nuclear DNA, and they make proteins to produce energy. So when they have a lot of heteroplasmy, they make these protein complexes through the electron transport chain there, so complex one through four, and they make them less efficient, so you can't even produce a lot of energy. So we can get rid of the dysfunctional four-cylinder mitochondria and replace them with brand new mitochondria. Now, to the next problem here. So this is the citric acid cycle or the TCA cycle in the mitochondria. Now, if you don't have good nutrient status, it's going to power down production of ATP. It can also trigger fission, small damaged mitochondria. See all these vitamins you need? So if you're lacking any of these B vitamins, it really just slows down or crawl. Electron transport chain, you also need MK4, Co, CoQ10, CoQ10 for the electron transport chain. So as you can see there, you have to have good vitamin and mineral status. But the remarkable thing about getting this right, especially with gut health, is right here. When you've got good gut health, your gut bacteria, and here's all the strands, the different types of bacteria, you see them there, they actually make all the B vitamins. You see that? They, they're making all the B vitamins. They also make vitamin, vitamin K as well. So your body can do the work. You don't need all these supplements. You don't need all these fancy testosterone boosters. What we need to do is just understand how to trigger POMC gene expression. 
And another thing that palm seed does, as I mentioned, it's antibacterial, parasitic. And what it also does is thickens up the protective lining of your sinuses. So like sinus infections, hay fever, your esophagus, your gut, your intestines, your colon. And it also reduces biofilms. So if you've got chronic UTIs, urine retract infections, or maybe sinus or gut infections, it's helping with that. And it selectively increases beneficial bacteria in your gut and it modulates the immune system in the gut and about 80% of your immune system is in your gut. It enhances gut motility so you're not constipated. It helps protect, protect you against endotoxins, which is pretty damn nasty. And it triggers the biotoxin pathway, which is this thing here, alpha MSH right there. So it chelates heavy metals, chemicals, so it's getting rid of a lot of toxins. And it's also helping with sleep, chronic pain, gut issues, prolonged illnesses, staph-resistant bacterial infections. Again, it's modulating cortisol too high, bring it down to optimal, too low, bring it up, testosterone production, and also anti-diuretic hormone. So you're not over-urinating and depleting minerals. And ever since I got this right, as a 53-year-old man, I don't wake up to go to the toilet anymore. I used to wake up once or twice. Now it's just all the way through. So this, this is a pretty cool benefit right there. So what we've got to really appreciate is the mitochondria. We have to make sure that they're healthy. We've got to get rid of the, rid of the dysfunctional mitochondria. And we've got to trigger the new mitochondria to proliferate through all the cells in our body. And then we've also got to have good nutrient status to increase gene expression of pro-opio-melanocortin, which is going to lower your appetite and increase basal metabolic rate, which is the holy grail of fat loss. So that is how we can start to think about fixing this energy issue, which a lot of people suffer with. So we've got to rejuvenate the mitochondria and start triggering the production of POM C. So on the next video, I'm going to go over exactly how to do that. I want to make these videos more short and concise. So here is why your energy is kind of shit. And on the next video, I'm going to talk about the steps we need to put in place to make sure that we're triggering gene expression of POMC. And also we'll, we'll touch on vitamin and mineral status as well. So I hope you found this interesting. And I now believe in my heart that we don't need to do all these extensive testing anymore. If we put these systems into place and we start to experience better health through anecdotal evidence within our cells, the way we feel, and our blood labs start to get better, our bowels movements, as terrible as that is to think about, they start to get more consistent and we don't have bloating and dissension and the joint pain starts to go away, we're moving everything in the right direction. And the blood labs, they're pretty easy to measure. So this ex really expensive GI map testing the food sensitivity testing, I don't believe anymore that we need to do that testing. What I believe now is that we just need to fix these two big problems and start moving in that direction. So that's all I've got for this video. If you like these videos, drop a comment below and share it with somebody if you found this interesting. And I will see you on the next video when we talk about how to signal POMC and also we'll talk about better gut health as well.